What we're going to take a look at next is a mallet finger, and sometimes the mallet fingers, even though they're small orthotic, can be most challenging just because they're small. So what we're going to try to do is have this DIP extension orthosis. There's multiple different uh, ways to fabricate this. There's five to six different uh, applications. So we're going to take a look at um, using 16th inch microperforated aquaplast. I'm going to do a pattern here first and show you how that's done. Um, and then we'll go ahead and make a simple orthotic. I'll show you two different designs. Again, there's five to six different uh, uh, designs that you could use for these and should be used off and on throughout the course of the eight week um, intervention with uh, um, trigger fingers, or excuse me, five to six different designs that can be used over the course of eight weeks or so with a mallet finger based on whether it be a bony mallet or whether it be a soft tissue zone one extensor tendon injury alone. So what we'll do is we'll t do a T design. So over the back of the hand, we'll trace out this joint. We'll come just distal to the DIP joint and we'll create a little T. I leave the pulp of the digit open just to make sure that there's sensation and they can make sure there's good blood flow to the tip of that finger. This will wrap around the finger dorsally. Lift your hand up, please. So now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll place that over the back of the finger and wrap that material around. Bring the two pieces together with the DIP joint and extension over the buller aspect of the distal pulp. Pull the material from the, from the uh, splint pan. Apply the pattern right directly to the material. Cut that out. Remove that pattern. There's our pattern to begin with. We remove, remove the material from the splint pan. We can either turn the finger over if we want to, or we can bring that nail bed back and apply the material. and pull that back slightly into mild hyperextension without any blanching of the skin. That leaves the distal pulp of that open a little bit for the nail, if they do have a nail, uh, to go through. We want to make sure that the strapping goes just distal to the PIP joint to allow PIP joint flexion. Sometimes I'll have the patient hold that for me. Can you hold the fi you tip your finger up? Thank you. I'll apply that strap circumferentially and let go, thank you, around the finger, and there I have my mallet finger orthosis. That's it. Now we're going to do a different design for the mallet finger. I'll show you two today. So all I'm doing is taking a 16th inch piece of microperforated aquaplast, Place it volally just distal to the, to the uh, PIP joint. Gently stretch over the dorsum and I'll tack my edges down. I'll make them circumferential orthosis. Pinch my edges making sure there's no skin that's in there. And from that position, I'll move right along the borders of the digit. And I'll allow that to, seal, to cease up, to harden. I'll 
I'll make sure to take off any extra material that might be blocking the interphalangeal joint flexion. I may slide that off. And then I'll break the seal or else trim up the center line on either side. Make sure to trim off any rough edges. Smooth them out if need be. This is a nice splint design in order to allow for changes in edema. And it's very easy to cut down. Apply your Velcro strap, your Velcro uh, dorsally or, vo or volally, whatever you like. Wrap that around. Trim it off. And here's another design for Mallet Finger.